It'll do. Hello, I'm Aaron Pringle, and welcome to my channel, where pop culture and cocktails collide, just as the prophecy foretold. Welcome to another Cinemixology, a loosely defined series exploring cocktails in pop culture. Today, we're continuing our deep dive into the cocktails of the John Wick universe. If you haven't had time to watch part one, I'll give you a minute to do so now. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And while we wait for those guys, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content from me, Aaron Pringle, who's the best. Okay, now that everyone's caught up, let's get right into part two as we explore the drinks of another crime family with ties to John's past, Santino and Gianna D'Antonio. It's Cinemixology! Ooh! Continuing on from John Wick, the main imagery of John Wick 2 is John's descent back into the assassin underworld he had previously escaped. Throughout the movie, we always see John going down. If he's using stairs, he's going down them. If he's riding an elevator, that arrow is pointed down. The visual language of the film makes it clear that John is traveling deep back down into both the literal and metaphorical underworld, and he will have to deal with all the hellish minions that lurk there. And the main thrust that is pulling John back into the technicolor bowels of hell are the D'Antonios. This fancy brother-sister duo are not defined by the variety of their drinks as the Tarasovs were, but rather their soul drink, red wine. The D'Antonios. As mentioned before, Santino and Gianna D'Antonio are the heads of a crime family with ties to John's past, as well as members of the mysterious High Table. Though these ties are kept vague, as is par for the course for the Wickverse, we know a few main things. One, Santino provided some sort of help during the impossible task that allowed John to retire from the paid murder business and escape the underworld. Two, Gianna and then Santino were one of 12 members of a mysterious organization known as the High Table that rules the criminal underworld. Three, John and Gianna considered each other friends. And four, John owes a debt to Santino in the form of a favor that cannot be refused. Though John wants to be done with all this nonsense after he makes peace with the Tarasovs, it's Santino that drags John further back in by calling in a blood debt. John tries to refuse and begs Santino to call off the debt, but obviously that doesn't happen because we need a sequel. No, Santino ignores John's pleas and orders John to kill Gianna so that Santino can take control of his family's crime organization. John does this, then seeks revenge on Santino, and that assassination sets up John Wick 3. And that's the whole plot of John Wick 2. Seriously, that's it. However, this bare bones plot has a lot going on in the background. So let's start examining these fancy siblings drinking choices, starting with Gianna. Who is Gianna D'Antonio? Gianna is all about wine. <sighs> Despite her relatively short screen time, she's seen drinking from at least two different glasses of red wine. Sipping red wine head to toe in sequins is life goals if I've ever seen them. Gianna is introduced walking into a bacchanalia throne in her honor, and as everyone else toasts her with champagne, she replies with her glass of wine, cause she's a boss bitch. And it's not just that she drinks wine, oh no. Almost her entire main scene takes place in what looks like a cross between a wine cellar, chapel, and a Turkish bath. And there is wine everywhere. Racks of wine adorn the walls. There's wine decanters and glassware lying about. And then there's the decor. A light fixture shaped like an old grapevine with glass grape clusters serving as candle holders. There are even what appear to be tall glass columns of wine with tiny votive candles floating in them. When she dies, her blood stains her bath water into a red wine sea. So it's pretty obvious that she represents a goddess of wine. More on that later. But first, why did her brother want this deity dead? Who who is Santino D'Antonio? Santino is just kind of a prick. No, really. His sister had power and he wanted it. Santino actually does not drink at all until well after his sister is dead and he is attending his own party. As was his sister, he is celebrating his ascension to power. Unlike his sister, he toasts with champagne like everyone else. He does not have a glass of wine like his sister until the very end of the movie, directly before he's killed by John Wick. From this, 
we can infer that Santino is a pale imitation of his sister and not worth the deific title he held briefly before his death. The symbolism of it all. The creators of John Wick have made it clear that while they draw inspiration from certain mythologies and religious traditions, looking for a one-to-one -one comparison is a fool's game. There is a lot of interesting small touches as we've explored before, but looking too deep would be pointless. The mythology used in John Wick is not about deep allegory, but rather using the different mythologies to create an illusion. This has been used to effectively heighten the cinematic reality of the Wickverse without a lot of explicit detail. The quality of being recognizable but different permeates these films and makes them fun to watch and talk about and to spin these theories as I am now. And I feel it enriches the experience of watching these movies, like they're action-packed leaping off points for your imagination. So now that I've justified myself, let's look at how Greek and Roman mythology is weaved and remixed with Catholic imagery to add a rich, unspoken backstory to the D'Antonios. The D'Antonios are Dionysus. As I have said, the D'Antonios, and especially Gianna, represent a god of wine. The most well-known god of wine being Dionysus, aka Bacchus. The myths of Dionysus are kind of a mess, probably because his followers were hot drunk messes, and myth transcribers either didn't like them or couldn't understand a goddamn word they were saying. However, some myths of Dionysus present him as a duality, stemming from a myth where he was born twice. Once in the natural way, when Zeus knocked up his mother, and once in a less usual way, when he was brought forth out of Zeus's thigh. Look man, Greek gods are weird. This duality permeates his myth, as he is both ecstatic celebration as well as angry madness. Early myths extended this duality to give him both masculine and feminine traits. The non-binary god of winery. As such, the D'Antonio siblings represent both halves of the god-goddess of wine. One particular special skill of Dionysus was his ability to travel to the underworld to rescue people. One myth in particular has Dionysus traveling to the underworld and rescuing his mother. This is paralleled and reversed in John Wick. Santino is angry, vengeful Dionysus demands John's help to kill his feminine half, and in doing so, drags John back to the underworld. And this isn't the only reversal slash perversion of a myth, because also, Santino D'Antonio is Saint Anthony. Okay, so this isn't a super deep insight considering his name literally translates to Little Saint Anthony, but bear with me. Saint Anthony is known as the patron saint of lost things. This includes lost objects and people, but also extends to more abstract concepts like lost faith and lost souls. The more extravagant miracles associated with Saint Anthony tend to follow a similar pattern. First, someone is tragically killed or maimed. Oh, no. Then, a loved one prays to Saint Anthony, and then a miracle happens and the dead people are fine. Hooray! So again, we have an entity that traditionally pulls things out of the underworld, again perverted, to instead be clawing John back down into it. What does this mean for John Wick? The D'Antonio siblings are adorned with the myths of beings that can recover people and things, and can transport people between life and the underworld. The fact that they served to bring John back to hell can only mean one thing. John belongs in hell. It was his foray into life free from the underworld that was the fluke. He was lost from where he belongs and is now being returned. John does not deal in the realm of saints and gods, but rather demons and devils. As such, the John Wick series is not about salvation. It is about John having been lost in heaven for some time now, and now being returned to the hell where he belongs and the existential angst this creates in him that ultimately leads to, you know, jamming pencils into the necks of other assassins for our amusement. A glimmer of hope. Okay, so there is one part of the Dionysus myth that offers hope to John. According to GreekMythology.com, Dionysus's return to life was symbolically echoed in viticulture, where the vines must be pruned back sharply and then become dormant in winter for them to bear fruit. If you remember, when John confronts Gianna, he is framed by that light fixture that is shaped like a gnarled old grapevine. Perhaps by cutting back the old vines of power that the D'Antonios represented, John is creating a path for new growth and redemption, if not necessarily for himself, at least for a, a better world, let's say. Whatever that could possibly mean in the John Wick verse. 
Wild speculative theories. Okay, so it's still a John Wick fan video, so of course I have to have some wild theories about the D'Antonios and what they can mean for John in the sequels. Wild theory number one. John is performing a funeral mass in reverse. Okay, so with the allusion to St. Anthony, anything Catholic becomes fair game. I've just decided. And this theory is only like slightly crazy. Okay, so the basic parts of a funeral mass are the liturgy of the word, the liturgy of the Eucharist, and the burial. So in John Wick 1, you remember he digs up a box buried in his basement full of things from his old life. This unearthing of his past serves as a perversion of the burial rites. Instead of putting things in the ground, he's taking them out of the ground. You get it. In John Wick 2, he drains the blood of wine goddess Gianna. Catholics closely associate wine with the blood of Jesus, and the second half of the liturgy of the Eucharist is receiving the blood of Christ in the form of wine, another perversion of the ritual. In John Wick 3, John travels to meet the coin maker who displays the original coin in an ornate glass holder. This is highly reminiscent of a monstrance, a vessel used to hold the communion host, which is given in the first half of the Eucharist as a symbol of the body of Christ. Here, it is used to hold a golden idol, another perversion. If so if this theory holds up, in the next film we would expect John to move into the liturgy of the word, the last part of that being the general intercessions. General intercessions are just small prayers you offer up to God for sick people or what have you. So if we continue moving with the pattern of moving backwards and perverting the ritual, we would expect to see a theme of people invoking curses or harm against others in John Wick 4. For example, we might hear a lot of, may you meet a horrid end by John Wick's hand, I curse you. Or you know, something less stupid than that. Theory number two. Killing the D'Antonios destroyed John's last chance at freedom. Dionysus isn't the only god of wine out there. Another god was called Liber which literally means free in Latin. This god also had a masculine and feminine half and was closely associated with grapes, wine, and viticulture. As the name suggests, in addition to wine, Liber and his female counterpart Libra were also the gods of freedom and being free. This could mean we have another perversion of the myth as the D'Antonios decidedly represent the opposite of freedom to John. They are the inescapable ties that bind John to the underworld. Or they could literally represent John's only path to freedom. So you're free, am I? No. Gianna is also the Italian feminine form of the name John, suggesting John is killing himself by killing Gianna. He may have had no choice in that death, but his impatience with the other half of the freedom god, i.e. killing Santino, is what seals his fate. He's destroyed possibly the only means of his ensured freedom from the underworld, and the consequences of that are still playing out in the films. Well, that's gonna do it for part two of my series into the drinks of John Wick. Don't forget to like this video, and if you wanna see more content from me, please consider becoming a Patreon. And in addition to helping create more content, you'll also receive access to uncensored videos and more. Also, comment down below if you have a movie or show you'd like to see on Cinemixology. Anything else? Oh yeah, subscribe! Mm -hmm.